Good evening, campers. It's me, Kira. Today we are going to talk about the 1966 science fiction novel Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. Our protagonist, Charlie Gordon, has an IQ of 68 and is undergoing an experiment to make him smarter. The leads of this experiment, Professor Nima and Dr. Strauss, hope to increase Charlie's IQ. To document this experiment, Charlie is given one job. He has to complete progress reports and hand them in. He has to just write what he is thinking about, what he's doing on his day-to-day -day basis. There's no rhyme or reason to what he has to do, just that he has to do it. In a wonderful way, upon opening Flowers for Algernon, we're going to know that Charlie is mentally disabled in the reason that he can't spell and he can't really write. He doesn't know what to put on the page. There are syntax errors, there are spelling mistakes. Everything is very simple. But through these progress reports, we the reader learn at the same time as Charlie what is going on. And we'll see that the errors that Charlie was making are now being rectified. He's consciously striking out words and replacing them. Words that he didn't know he could now comprehend. His sentences become more complex. His way of thinking and reasoning begin to heighten. Charlie's simplicity means that he doesn't really understand what this experiment is meant to do. So the researchers decide to introduce him to Algernon, the mouse. Algernon, through his labyrinthine navigation, has proved that this experiment works, and therefore will it work on a human. So Charlie understands that he is like the lab rat. Keyes' novel is not going to keep you in the laboratory. In fact, we're going to spend the majority of the time out in Charlie's day-to-day -day life, where he sweeps the floor of a bakery. It was Charlie's uncle, in fact, who got him the role in the bakery, knowing that his nephew was not mentally capable and so the owner of the bakery decides to take him on. Charlie outlines his jobs and discusses his friendship that he has with his co-workers but with his increased intelligence begins to realize that maybe they're mocking him. Maybe he's not in on the joke just that he is the joke. This is the pivotal scene and will underline the trajectory of this entire novel meaning he begins to understand his own actions and the ramifications of others while he had an IQ of below 70 and completely inept socially to the point that he's blissfully unaware in fact he's happy at that stage because he's not aware of the context because he's not aware of what his co-workers are doing he just thinks that he's part of the bacon family the reader understand that charlie is being exploited for his inability to process he's happy and in fact he's going to become more miserable throughout the book. With his newfound perspective on the world, Charlie begins to see himself as someone completely different. And in fact, through flashbacks and through recollecting his memories, we shift from first person to third person. Charlie himself begins to distance himself from his past. Charlie is able to understand how his co-workers and family have all treated him and begins to understand that no one was treating him with kindness. In fact, the argument presented is that is with increased intelligence a lacking in kindness? Do these professors and doctors really have Charlie's best interests at heart? So much so that the scientific community see Charlie as a human experiment. They don't see him as a person, neither do they see him as an individual. And at that moment, Charlie breaks. He picks up Algernon, who is also there, and runs off to live in Manhattan. The venture to Manhattan happens at around the halfway point, but it is that, that moment where this book stagnate completely. And in order to understand why I feel that way, I think it's worth understanding the publication history. The novel Flowers for Algernon was originally a short story, first penned by Keyes in 1958, and that went on to win the Hugo. He then revised and elongated to the book that we know today that was published in 1966, The One, The Nebula. Though I have not gone out of my way to find the short story, I can probably guess that it's the middle of this book that was added and elongated because the crescendo of Charlie's capability and the diminuendo of Charlie's capability is so quick that it loses all impact. The majority of this is Charlie in his genius state, but he's so focused on love, compassion, and his sexual desires that that pretty much clogs the book up. 
But as you begin this journey wanting to find the cheese at the end, you're just met with dead ends of relationships that don't happen and Charlie wanting to get a connection but can't. And I understand that some people would argue, well, his want to have desire, his want to love is so strong because his progress has pushed everyone away. I can understand that. It would be a compelling argument and I think that's the reason why Keyes has included it. In leaving the confines of the laboratory, this book just becomes an A&E waiting room, wondering when something is going to happen, only for it to quickly resolve. And it just leaves you going, was it worth going in the end? Was the journey worthwhile? Maybe, but probably not. I was totally captivated by the first 100 pages, but what I think could be an emotional gut punch in the last 50 had just been soured by the middle, which made the medicine not go down five out of 10. It was a tough pill to swallow.